All right. So let's solve for the internal forces at C. Let's solve for the internal forces at C. So I want to cut it right here at C and draw N, V, and M and solve for N, V, and M. But before I cut it, I need to uh, either solve for what's happening at B or solve for what, ha what is happening at A. I, thinking ahead, I I'm, think I'm going to keep that half of it. All right, I'm going to keep that half of it. So I don't really care what's happening at A. A is a pin. Uh, C is a, or B is a roller. Um, so I, how can I solve for B, Y? Right here is B, Y. Right here is A, Y, and A, X. And I don't really care about because I'm going to throw that half away. Uh, if I look at the whole free body diagram, and if I sum the moments about A, right, this is being smart with your equations and thinking ahead, looking ahead. I, I, I could sum, sum force in X, that's all, solve me for AX. I could sum force in Y, but summing the moments about A, then AX and AY don't show up in my equation. And BY is the only thing that shows up in my equation. Let's do this one because you've got to be able to handle distributed loads, especially triangular distributed loads. All right, y'all know that a triangular distributed load, well, first of all, any distributed loads, you can replace it with a force, and you need to know the location of that force. Uh, and I think about it as the area, right, the magnitude of the force that I'm going to replace the distributed load with. The magnitude of the force is the area of the distributed load, and the location is at the centroid of that area. Uh, so I would replace this with one force at three from here, six from here, right? Because the centroid of a triangle is one third and two thirds, and it's, it's closer to the taller side. And I'll replace it with a force that's one half base times height. That would be 675. That would be 675. So in the future, I might kind of, Go faster through distributed loads, but assume that you can handle them. <clears throat> so some of the moments about A uh, would be BY is nine meters away, creating a positive moment. Uh, but 675 kilonewtons is three meters away, creating a uh, negative moment. So BY 225 kilonewtons. And does that make sense? I mean, do y'all know enough about this? If you got a distributed load that's really like a 675 over here, you know you only need a 225 over there to create the moment equal to zero. It has a longer moment arm. Um, if you get some really, really large value, you've probably forgotten your moment arm. That's a very common mistake is to forget the moment arm in your moment equation. So uh, anyway, just make sure your answer kind of makes sense. All right, so <laughs> I've got that BY now. I think I'm ready to cut it. I'm only keeping that side. So I'm gonna cut this. So I've cut it right here at B. Before I forget, let me draw the N. You see how I'm, now I'm drawing the N to the left, but, but it, it's always outward of the cut. V would be that way. I just kind of memorize the other way, and V is that way. M would be like smiley face, positive sign convention for N, V, and M. Uh, B, Y is still 225. All right, now, this distributed load, I, I can't just go back to it being uh, 675 kilonewtons. I need to redo this distributed load, right? So it's still a... This, when you say, is still a triangle, right? That is still a triangle. So I'm going to replace it with one force. If this is two, uh, then this would be one-third of two and two-thirds of two. So two-third from the left, four-thirds from the right. What would the magnitude be? The magnitude would be one-half base times height. Uh, this is not too difficult but what is the height right there uh don't exactly have it 
you do it a number of different ways, think about the slope of that uh, distributed load. I would think about similar triangles. I would think about similar triangles. And I would say this has a height of 150 over nine, right? 150 over nine would be my height over two, right? Would you, would you say that this triangle, this triangle right here is similar to my small pink triangle? And so this triangle would be 150 by nine. This triangle would be H by two. That's how I would do this, similar triangles. 150 over nine equals H over two. H would be, let's see if it makes sense. 33.33, 33.33. Does that make sense? If, if it was 150 over there, you know, it would be two ninths of 150. Yeah. All right. So <clears throat> triangular distributed load. I'm spending a lot of time on this, these distributed loads and you'll do a problem later. Uh, so I'll definitely test you on it. Expect you to be able to do that. Uh, 33.33 kilonewtons per minute. I'm really leaving off my units, but I think they work out. All right. Now I think I'm ready to sum the forces in X. N is pointed to the left. Equals zero. So N is equal to zero. That's fine. My internal normal force is equal to zero. It just doesn't feel that on the inside. And that's fine. Summing the forces in the y direction. V, uh, one half times two times, comes kind of back to 33.33 plus 225. V would be 192. I'm rounding it a little bit. Negative 192. Um, I'm not too, I don't care too much about these, but the rest of them, if your answer comes out negative, leave it negative. All right. That negative means something, uh, for normal force, that negative would mean compression. Uh, for moments that negative would mean a frown, you know? Okay. Um, for V it's, it's really like a positive is a positive is kind of like this. A negative is kind of like this, but we won't we won't dig down too far into that. All right. Uh, but anyway, now I can sum the moments. I can sum the moments at any point. I can sum the moments at any point. I like to sum the moments about the cut. I like to sum the moments about the cut. But you could sum the moments about any point. I sum the moments about the cut because N goes straight through the cut and B goes straight through the cut. All right. I've got M, uh, but that is negative why is that negative because these three equations are are defined by my axes actually these three equations are really just defined whatever you define as positive and i always define positive as uh counterclockwise all right uh so that i've got negative m i've got 33.33 acting two thirds meters away, creating a negative moment. And then I've got 225 acting two meters away, creating a positive moment equals zero. So my internal moment is 427.8 kilonewton meters. It came out positive, I'll leave it positive. It came out positive. So I'll leave it positive. All right, this is a review, hopefully. You might have done it a little bit differently. You might, your statics class might do things a little bit differently, but let's step back and look at the overall idea. You gotta be able to solve for like VY, for instance. You gotta be able to handle distributed loads. Here's one I gave on a test last semester. I have a few people, I think they're a little angry, maybe because we didn't do this in uh, class. Uh, but I definitely uh, expected you to be able to handle this from statics. A distributed load that is linear, but it goes from one height to a, another height. We all handle that. I, I taught it by 
breaking it into a triangle on top of a uh, rectangular load. Um, and so that's how I will, that's how I would do that. Um, I gave it on a test and I realized I didn't mention it, talk about it in class. But so anyway, go back. That, that's definitely um, distributed loads, linear distributed loads. I expect you to be able to handle. All right. So we cut it, throw away one half, draw N, V, and M in the positive sign convention, solve for N, V, and M, leave them positive or negative. Um, whatever they, the math comes out, leave them the way they are. Box in, and those are your answers. Those are your answers. And if we had cut this and looked at the other half, we would have gotten N is equal to zero. We would have gotten V is negative 192. And we've gotten M is positive 427. 